good morning to all honorable chairman honorable speaker honorable members of the state legislature it's a great honor and privilege to address this joint session of both the houses of andhra pradesh state legislature on the occasion of the budget session 2023 24 It is almost 4 years since the journey to fulfill the hopes of more than 5 crore people of this state had begun under the dynamic leadership of our honorable chief minister shri ys jagan mohan reddy relentless efforts have been made during all these years in ensuring that governance is more inclusive and transparent It is indeed heartening to share the way aspirations of the underprivileged, marginalized, and vulnerable groups have been fulfilled through the implementation of several pro-poor initiatives. Ever since my government was formed in 2019, we have embarked, embarked on an inclusive governance model under the broad welfare umbrella of. navaratnalu moving in in sync with the global development agenda of sustainable development goals the government has carved a well knit development and welfare framework of navaratnalu implicitly adopting the concept of leave no one behind implementation of this integrated welfare program where all schemes of the government have been mapped with SDGs has facilitated direct benefit transfer by the click of a button into the bank accounts of the beneficiaries without any leakages or discrimination on any ground whatsoever and with transparency under various schemes new age institutions for effective service delivery my government has recognized the importance of ensuring timely and transparent public service delivery to various sections of the population which include the hitherto neglected classes of scs sts bcs minorities farmers and women 15004 village ward sachivalayas across the state are instrumental in ensuring effective and transparent service delivery during these 45 months My government has extended financial assistance of about one lakh nine seven ninety seven lakh crores under various programs with an aim of improving living standards of the people, regardless of caste, creed, religion, gender, and political affiliation, under the ambit of Navaratnalu. Further. for more effective identification of beneficiaries my government is conducting mandatory social audit before the launch of any scheme the village ward volunteers deployed in rural urban areas for delivering government services and welfare schemes at the doorsteps of all eligible households have proved extremely effective now economic growth the economy of the state continues its encouraging trend the ad advanced estimates for 2022 23 indicate an overall growth of 16.22% at current prices all the three sectors of the economy namely agriculture and allied industries and services are projected to show significant growth performance the industry and service sector services sectors have helped the economy to register higher overall growth the per capita income of andhra pradesh at current prices have moved up from rupees 192517 in 2021 to rupees 219518 with an impressive growth of 14.02% the effective policy the effective policy formation and implementation by my government has ensured a year on year gsdp growth growth rate 
at 11.43 percent in 2021, which is the highest amongst all the states. Now, quality education, nurturing future generations. Dr. Yes Radha Krishnan has said, and I quote, the end product of education should be a free, creative man who can battle against historical circumstances and adversities of nature, unquote. Education is most effective resource to transform the younger generations. My government is utilizing every possible opportunity to develop the future generation to be globally competitive in all aspects. Towards this endeavor, utmost importance is being given to education through several path-breaking interventions. These include strengthening of the existing infrastructure in all government schools, streamlining and upgrading the midday meal program, implementing curricular reforms in consonance with the National Education Policy 2020 and setting up of an effective regulatory and monitoring mechanism. I would like to briefly highlight some of the interventions of my government that are contributing to quality learning outcomes. With an objective of modernizing and strengthening infrastructure in schools and thereby making environment more conducive for learning, my government is implementing Manabadi Nadu Nedu Nadu Nedu initiative since 2021. 15,717 schools have been taken up for revamp under the phase one with a financial outlay of rupees. 3,669 crores. Under this initiative, amenities under 12 categories such as toilets with running water, electrification with fans and tube lights, drinking water supply, furniture for students and staff, etc. are made available in schools. Under the second phase, which is in progress, 22,344 schools are and 280 other educational institutions under this initiative with an estimated total cost of rupees 16,021.67 crores. <laughs> to make sure that poverty of the parents does not come in the way of educating their children, my government has supported 44.49 lakh mothers in sending their 84 lakh children to schools under Jagananna Ammavadi's program. My, my, my government has so far spent 19,617.60 crores under this initiative. Out of the amount of rupees 15,000 being given annually to each mother, rupees 1,000 is earmarked for toilet maintenance fund and another rupees 1,000 for school maintenance fund which is released directly to the parents' committees in the government schools. <laughs> Digital learning has been the cornerstone of educational reforms in the state, with an aim to making students from socially deprived backgrounds globally competitive. My government has distributed 5.2 lakh tabs worth rupees 690 crores. <laughs> the tabs are preloaded with Baiju's content and they have been distributed to 4.60 lakh students of 8th class and 60,000 teachers of government and aided schools free of cost. To further bolster up our efforts in this direction, we are planning to introduce interactive flat panels from classes 6 and above. The panels are planned to, to be installed in 30,213 classrooms in 5,800 schools with an aim to minimize the school dropouts and to improve gross enrollment ratio. 
my government has distributed student kits well before reopening of the schools under Jagananna Vidya Kanuka. These kits consist of all the required textbooks, uniforms, shoes, etc. required for the students. My government has spent rupees 2,368 crores since 2021, benefiting 47.4 lakh students of classes 1 to 10 in all the government and other government-aided schools in the state. The government has recognized the importance of nutrition for the healthy future of the children. To address the issue of malnutrition amongst children, the revamped midday meal program with additional nutritious food items in the menu in the name of Jagananna Goru Mudda is being implemented in the state for the children of classes 1 to 10, covering 43.26 lakh children. The amount incurred so far on this program by my government is rupees 3,239 crores. Realizing the importance value attached globally for English in the modern times and to equip our students for 21st century skill demands, my government is actively working to provide quality English medium education to all and thereby fulfill the aspirations of the parents from poorer sections. Bilingual textbooks, English labs have been introduced to achieve this aim. My government has implemented several curricular reforms from the academic year 2020-21 with a greater focus on foundational learning and numeracy. The textbooks from classes 1 to 7 have been redesigned with greater focus on an activity-based curriculum. Affiliation of government schools to CBSC and the capacity building of teachers are some of the other key reforms initiated. Keeping in view of the affiliation of all government schools to CBSC, the textbooks for class 8 have been adopted from NCERT and customized with local content and printed in bilingual both in Telugu and English. Sorry. I have some throat irritation, I'm sorry. Huh? <laughs> to ensure that all the students passing out of high schools continue their education and don't drop out, my government has decided to establish at least two junior colleges per mandal across the state, out of which one shall be exclusively for girls. My government is giving utmost importance to higher education. Andhra Pradesh is the only state in the country to take complete responsibility for providing higher education to 100% of its eligible students free of cost without any financial burden on their families. The government has initiated path-breaking reforms to transform the youth of the state into enlightened and employable global citizens ready to tackle future global challenges. With a view to ensuring that higher education is accessible even to children of disadvantaged sections, my government is reimbursing total fees under Jagananna Vidya Dinena. Under the scheme, the amount is transferred directly on a quarterly basis into the accounts of such mothers whose children pursue ITI, Polytechnic, Degree, Engineering, B pharmacy and other courses. So far, rupees 9,249 crores have been reimbursed to 24.75 lakh beneficiaries. Through Jagananna Vasati Divena, we are providing allowance up to rupees 20,000 for hostel and mess charges. Under the scheme, amount is credited direct directly into the accounts of mothers whose children are pursuing higher education. So far, an amount of rupees 3,366 crores have be, has been dispersed to 18.77 lakh students under the scheme. Effective implementation of equitable and inclusive schemes like Jagananna Vidya Divena 
and Jagananna Vasati Divena has resulted in significant improvements in gross enrollment ratio in Andhra Pradesh. The government has also established new higher educational institutions such as Tribal Engineering College at Kurupam, JNTU Gurajada at Vizianagaram, Andhra Kesari University at Ongol, Dr. YSR Architecture and Fine Arts University at YSR Kadapa, Cluster University at Karnul, and 14 government degree colleges to provide accessible and inclusive higher education. For the first time in the country, my government has created a 50% government quota in medical dental courses and a 35% government